We are working with one force in the universe, but in a different way. And I believe that the Taoism have the most practice to feel the force in the universe. Okay, the Qigong practice, everything is so, so amazing that you can feel the force, but you don't have to worshiping, you don't have to be devoting because it don't work that way. You have to work with the force. We have to work with God, walking with God, God within you, Chi within you. This is Columbus Park, right in the heart of Chinatown. And every morning, the Chinese people come here to do the health exercises that we know as Qigong for the last 5,000 years. And from this park, if you walk along the street for two and a half blocks, very close. Here it is, Confucius Plaza. This is where Master Che started teaching Tao Yoga 30 years ago. This is where it all started. I have a lot of gratitude towards Master Chia for bringing this work to the West and for its impact on me as a person and on the global community. These fundamental practices created um, a structure for a lot of um, health practitioners, people that are interested in alternative medicine, that they could really take care of themselves. There was a huge wave that was coming up of holistic and alternative medicine. And I think Manta Chu has played a big role in that. He was a real pioneer. And healer healed themselves. Master Shi and I even presented the microcosmic orbit in the first annual meeting of the American Holistic Medical Association in Madison, Wisconsin. When he gave the, the talk, uh, one doctor and one nurse was able to activate their microcosmic orbit in just 10 minutes, so, uh, just by listening to his instructions. Matak Chia was in my mind a genius and I saw his ability to adapt to things and it was uh, being an eyewitness to this enfoldment was an amazing thing because every time there was a question from a student he would understand that we're Americans and not Chinese and he was looking for ways to make it work for us. Montechi was so encouraging and so supportive of us I was uh, very deeply impressed and he continued to be like that for for me very encouraging. He is such a man of his virtues he lives the Healing Tao system you know, he was always so fair and kind-hearted and loving and compassionate with us. I, I just have such warm-hearted memories of that time. One thing I like about him, uh, among other things besides the teaching, was that um, he was very direct, very enthusiastic, very young in terms of his spirit. Um, he was equally excited as we were to be involved in these teachings, in this project, in this communication, this practice, and introducing all these things, it was something that it was not an environment where anything was being held back. So it was always very enthusiastic to get together with the crowd, which was a small crowd, and with him and the wife even, you know, she was there also. No? Mani Wan was always cooking and Master Chia never slept. I don't think I've ever seen him sleeping. A lot of his work I learned uh, basically traveling with him, staying in hotel rooms, and he would write a little formula on the back of an envelope, like to Gettysburg Address. I, I, would, <laughs> I would study the, you know, the fusion or the microcosmic, you know, because he would just scribble it on a little piece of paper, and I would practice it, and I'd ask him, and, and I'd learn the Tai Chi form kind of traveling, and that was my, uh, that was how I began to learn. When I met Master Chia, my impression of him was a man full of energy, and an abundance of energy. I, I had a lot of energy and I needed direction, and he had these practices that were going to help me center and ground and direct myself in my life. He was an incredible teacher. He was inspirational. Uh, he was this martial artist, he was a healer, he was someone who was this foreigner coming to America to teach us uh, a path. Even though his English wasn't very good, you knew, at least the, the inner group that were working with him, you knew that if he's giving a workshop like in New York City, you know when you start, you know, there's a time when you start, but you never know when you're going to finish. 
okay? Because we will go to, uh, you know, it will be 11 o'clock in Chinatown. We started at 9 o'clock. Then we go to eat with him. And some Chinese restaurants, no, the one in the corner is better. And then we go there, a whole bunch of us. And then he will insist in paying. And I found that also very uh, unusual. Okay? My Chinese teacher also pay for everything, you know? But not for everybody. <laughs> Montek Chia has allowed me to be very creative with my practice and my teaching because I find he is himself. He freshens up these classical uh, practices with his humor and his clarity and uh, brings them into very practical, <clears throat> practical tools that anybody can pick up. As I believe Montak Chia to be a genius, not only in the information that he dispersed openly and bravely because he was one of the first to open up this formerly secretive information. I wasn't quite aware of that right in the beginning, but I did find that out. I began eventually reading other books, and I believe to this very day that no other teacher that I've read especially from so early on, gave such intensified, clear teachings that was passed to him, mostly by White Cloud, his teacher, and his many other teachers. He had a rich background, and he had a business sense. You know, he was the direct lineage. He was the real deal. He was the first one to uh, expose the ancient secrets in Chinatown that I guess you can uh, equate him to Bruce Lee in a sense who brought Kung Fu to Chinatown, to Americans, to share it with the people. Uh, Master Chia did that with the inner aspect of the martial arts and uh, he was very generous with offering the knowledge that took him many years to accrue through many of his masters. As a child I read about these Taoists and the things they could do and the powers that they had and I never ever thought I would get my hands on that knowledge because it was very secret and you know I knew that and, and so I was very tickled to actually have the chance and it's been one of the deepest passions of my whole life. I mean I love the gifts, it continues to give me gifts, the energy, the um, ability to sense, I mean I eventually went on to become an acupuncturist, I think partly because of interacting with Master Chia and learning the knowledge. It's like I wanted more. I wanted to fully study the energetics of life um, through this system. He played a big role in encouraging people to create a new reality for themselves. And when people get into that place of inner happiness and compassion, that's going to ripple out into the whole evolution of this planet. It convinced me to this day that his system is complete um, in mind, body, spirit development and I will ever be thankful for these teachings because it's opened me up to a whole new world of energy development, learning how to love myself, learning how to smile and uh, it's brought a lot of calm, peace and tranquility into my life. What I was uh, taking from uh, Master Chia system was something that was spiritual but at the same time was also very practical. Uh, something that will not draw me to spiritual, to spirituality, which other yoga systems were, uh, were appeared at those years, but also had the, the oriental flavor and uh, the um, mysticism, um, but in down-to-earth uh, presentation. I was studying, I was assisting Master Chia at Big Indian, or I was training, always training and assisting and studying and meeting people from all over the world. It was fascinating. Um, and these Europeans that would come over for four to six weeks because they had great vacations. <laughs> I found also very interesting people surrounding uh, Master Chia, very interesting uh, students, very good uh, and strong personalities also. 
And I was accepted also. It's like uh, it was a big hug there. So from there, from those times, I, I, until now, I keep some very good friendships. I've stayed with the Healing Tao because the growth is never-ending. I learn from other teachers. I learn from the students when I teach. Uh, you know, I'm connected to a lineage, you know, Master Chia, Grand Master Chia. I'm connected to Confucius, to, you know, to Taoism from way back. i just like to thank all the... Um senior instructors and all the instructors that are carrying forth these these amazing practices into the world and Mantak Chia who's been a huge inspiration for all of us and encouraging us all to go inside and make those internal shifts in our own consciousness and then through that we can help evolve and heal this earth and make it more sustainable for all of us so I am so, so grateful. Everybody should open the microcosmic and everybody should learn how to handle their emotional and not regarding them as sin. And everybody should learn how to manage their own soul and their own spirit.